Um, I'm just going to, I'll only be three or four minutes because it's been a very long day. I'm sure uh, everyone is looking forward uh, to a refreshment at the end of the day. Uh, and I'd just um, <clears throat> like to thank um, all the fantastic chairs, speakers, and panelists um, who have come along uh, to the meeting today. <clears throat> I certainly think there's been appetite for a meeting about the knowns and knowns. Um, this is reflected in the fact that of all the people I invited, uh, only one person said no and one didn't reply. And uh, the fantastic uh, quality of the um, speakers and the, and the chairs, etc., I think shows how people at the cutting edge of this field uh, recognize the fact that there are particular issues about uh, what's known and unknown. <clears throat> So I'm uh, going to just finish by saying that um, there is one thing that I'm certain of, and this is um, for uh, Fiona Fox, and that is that data are plural, um, uh, rather than being data is, we must have uh, data uh, as plural. Uh, and um, I think an important issue which has come up in many of the discussions has been about um, the notion of the science, much of the um, uh, you know, discussion, in, uh, especially from government, has been that they are following the science as though there is a sort of monolithic uh, science of COVID, as it were. And uh, in the uh, chat function between the speakers and um, panellists, uh, Helen Lambert uh, put up, I thought, a very opposite uh, comment that it's striking that when we've had the questions today, that many of those questions from the uh, participants, from the audience, have been basically social questions about public trust, economic effects, overcrowding, uh, and that's an argument of having more social science experts involved in these discussions. And uh, I think certainly think that's the case, and hopefully there will be more webinars uh, like this uh, when the, you know the topics can be focused uh, differently and taking that take that into account. Um, also, though. Um, uh, when you know when having discussions with people who are not in the sort of biomedical uh, area about essentially social issues related to um, COVID, uh, often the discussion comes down to what are biological questions or epidemiological questions. I think you just it's not like there's a separation of the sort of social domain and the bio, or the biological domain um, um, that that allows you know, such a, a separation. I think the two come together. And to go back to the uh, introduction, you know, when talking about um, you know, uh, what is considered to be good scientific practice and being open to um, uncertainty and always to think that what one is thinking is provisional, which is never other than uh, provisional. Um, the, 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 the scientific corollary of that is that to strengthen evidence, you need to take evidence from all different domains. You don't just simply repeat exactly the same study again and again and again. What you need to do um, is to uh, triangulate evidence. If you take evidence where, you know, from one domain which supports what you see uh, looking from another uh, aspect, that strengthens your, uh, your conclusions, which is a, makes a strong case for trying to be truly multidisciplinary rather than uh, nominally uh, multidisciplinary. Uh, as um, is often seen. Uh, uh, with excellent timing um, on Newsnight tonight, Deb Cohen is uh, presenting a, a, a section about uncertainty in COVID. And yesterday, uh, and here's an advert for something else on the BBC, there was an excellent documentary uh, from uh, 9 p.m., which is available on the iPlayer, you know, lockdown 1.0, following the science. And what I was really impressed about in that documentary were that some of the really key people involved uh, in you know, the development of, the, of um, science around, uh, around COVID uh, were very reflexive about things which where they had different positions than they would have now. And you know, we're, you know, we're um, demonstrating that such uncertainty uh, you know, would be beneficial uh, um, at particular times. But uh, as I also you know, started the, the day with, it's very difficult you know, to be uncertain when you're responding to a pandemic when by definition there needs to be, um, you know, there needs to be a, a response. Um, and 
going back to now to 1970 about uh, interventions in infectious disease and in epidemics and pandemics, the uh, Gordon Smith, who was Dean of the London School of Hygiene, said that the essential prerequisite of all good public health measures is that careful estimates should be made of their advantages and disadvantages, both the individual and the community, and that they should be implemented only when there is significant balance of advantage. And I think you know, everyone would agree with that notion, but how that comes into play in an urgent or an emergency situation is problematic. But that question also throws up the essential multidisciplinarity which is required because the advantages and the disadvantages are not just biomedical. It's not just morbidity and mortality rates, it's advantages and disadvantages across all domains of life. And, I, and you know, um, uh, one issue is that it's perfectly uh, understandable that for some people, individuals would come up with different answers about you know, what they think to be the, the, that, that appropriate balance, which is, I think, an, it's an unknown, uh, unknown to me uh, how one deals uh, with that individuality. But I, I do think that there's um, many questions left uh, open, and I would like to thank the BMJ for uh, adopting this uh, webinar when we were thinking about this a while ago. It's great that we got into discussions with the BMJ and it's been adopted and run brilliantly uh, by the BMJ. And uh, hopefully there might be uh, a space for more uh, joint webinars, for not, not whole days, don't worry, not more whole day webinars, but uh, uh, short webinars on particular issues, but which maintain uh, this essential uh, notion that uh, uncertainty needs to be dealt with. So uh, back to Phil. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, George. And uh, again, thanks to everyone for contributing. The final word uh, is going to go for Fiona Godley from the British Medical Journal, who put her chips on the table in supporting this. Uh, and I hope you're here to close this uh, wonderful day. Fiona, are you there? I am, Phil, and thank you so much. What a, what a privilege it's been. Um, how, how, how wonderful that uh, conversations, emails can lead to such a, a great, rich uh, discussion. Uh, an impossible task to even try to summarise, so I, of course I won't do that. The huge breadth and depth of the coverage um, has been wonderful. The talks will be available on the BMJ's YouTube channel and we will tweet the link when that's available. And also, as you will have seen, the Twitter feed, um, hashtag COVID unknowns, has done a great job of reflecting the discussion. So thank you to those of you who've really been active on Twitter. Um, what I will briefly talk about, just as others have done, is to, is to really um, praise the manner and the tone in which the day has been conducted, which is exactly what we had hoped for. And at the opening, I said how we hope to see, and indeed the purpose of the meeting was uh, a move away from polarised, politicised and sometimes personalised debate about COVID-19. And I think we've seen admirable clarity, amazing nuance, uh, with a welcome honesty and willingness to embrace uncertainty from everyone involved. Just a few tweets that have reflected this. Um, Jade Norris said, you know what's nice? Differing opinions. No one yelling or getting upset or calling people names. Amazing what face-to-face, -face, albeit online, communication does. Oana Brancati says, great talks, honest and straightforward discussion. So refreshing to hear straight talk and reflections. And Suno Bhopal says, hugely refreshing, open science-based discussion today. So let me just finally add my thanks to the speakers and chairs for these measured, reasoned and informed discussions, which I believe will help to change the tone of the wider debate. And uh, thanks to you who've been watching. I hope this may be, as George has implied, the first of many such meetings, maybe shorter ones looking at specific issues. So do get in touch with your thoughts or suggestions on Twitter at BMJ Latest or by email fgodley at bmj.com. Thank you very much and stay well. <laughs>